one, so I'm just talking about my views about self-diagnosing autism and why I disagree with it. So as I was saying in a previous video, it is usually the most able and capable people who do self-diagnose because people who are more disabled and impaired will need to get officially assessed to access support. Self-diagnosing for them is not an option. Um, now, some people, um, are, some people just self-diagnose and don't pursue any assessment whatsoever. And Ella's friend is one of them. As I said, she'd already admitted that she wouldn't get a diagnosis anyway because she said she's too able, basically. So she just feels she can self-diagnose herself, essentially. Um, personally, I don't think she is autistic. She's way too able socially. And like I say, she wouldn't get diagnosed anyway. She even admitted herself she wouldn't be able to, um, basically because she's not clinically impaired. Like I said, it takes a mickey because if autism's not a clinically significant impairment, then it's not even a thing. And for people who, have, well, it is a thing. I'm just saying. But if it, if if like if essentially anyone can claim to be autistic, regardless of not whether they're disabled or not, what message does that send out to society? It basically says that autism is just like a quirk. It's not like a serious thing, and like it makes it harder for people who are disabled because no one believes autism is serious anymore because like all these really able people are claiming to be autistic and I actually feel that for them it's really so it's really inappropriate like they should have a they, they clearly don't understand the ramifications of what they're doing it's perfectly fine for someone to think they might be and then to pursue a diagnosis without self-diagnosing of course all you can say is I think I might have it question mark so I'm going to go and pursue an assessment that's absolutely fine you have to begin somewhere that's not self-diagnosing that's just saying you might have something and then pursuing an assessment that's kind of honest and again to me it's all about honesty you know at the end of the day I kind of feel it's rather well it is it's, it's morally questionable isn't it to kind of claim you have something without actually having it verified to me that is morally questionable it goes against my ethics basically I think that's why I have an issue with it I feel it's unfair it goes against my ethics and it's dishonest and those are things that I really get very angry about um, I just feel it's very very wrong um, like I said, if someone thinks they have a condition, that's completely le legitimate, okay? I think there's a possibility I might have a slight form of dyspraxia. Possibility, question mark. I've never, I haven't been diagnosed with it, so I don't know. I might be wrong. I might not have it. That's okay. It's a question mark, a possibility. I, I am hoping to get an assessment at some point, but on the NHS it takes a really long time, particularly. Just because I'm interested and I'm curious and it might explain some extra difficulties I have. It might be explained by autism, but it's possible... Um, you know, it could be explained by something else as well. So I can't say I definitely have it because I don't know. I'm not a doctor and I can't say I know myself that well to be absolutely sure. So all I can say is it's possible, but I don't know. It's, you know, I literally don't know. Okay. And that's fine. Sometimes we just have to admit we don't know things. Okay. That's absolutely fine. Um, that doesn't get people's back up. People get back up when someone is basically claiming expertise that they don't have. That is dishonest and wrong, okay? Um, that's why, I think in a nutshell, this is why it bothers me. Um, I had to pursue an assessment for autism because I didn't have a choice. If I didn't need that assessment, if I was functioning okay, if I was like my brother and I just had some traits and I was functioning okay, no disability, you know, could go and get a job, you know, could go and do those things, um, I wouldn't need an assessment and I wouldn't want one anyway if that was the case because it's a hell of a lot better not to need a label like autism, you know, it's a lot easier, you don't, you know, it's basically one of those things you get when you really, really need it um, ultimately. So, and I had to get an assessment, and it was not easy, and I had to wait a long time for that assessment, and, you know, and it's quite a stressful experience, my parents were there, it took several days, um, yeah, and it kind of trivialises it and invalidates my experience, I find, it doesn't take anything away, not on that level, not on the level that Ella was talking about, um, but it trivialises and diminishes autism. For, you know, as, as a thing, it kind of says that for a clinician that diagnosed me, an expert who's basically studied autism, you know, got degrees in autism, whatever, it's basically saying that they're on the same level as someone who's, who's basically never been, you know, not an expert. Even psychiatrists, by the way, can't diagnose themselves, that's a fact. So basically, say a psychiatrist, yeah, strongly suspects that they have, I don't know, OCD, for example. Okay, they can't 
diagnose themselves. They might have all the knowledge under the sun, because obviously maybe they're an expert in OCD, um, but they can't diagnose themselves. They'll have to go and see a clinician who doesn't work in the same practice as them, because it has to be unbiased. Um, and that's the same with doctors as well, like GPs. If they think they've got a condition, they can't diagnose themselves. Even if they're an expert in that condition, they have to go and see someone outside of their practice who has expertise in that condition. So how can someone be expected to be able to diagnose autism in themselves? Particularly when autistic people, as a fact, we struggle with, with introspection, don't we? That's actually one of the symptoms of autism. It doesn't mean that we, don't, that we can't kind of understand aspects of ourselves. I'm not saying that at all. I would say that I'm pretty self-aware, for example. But we do struggle, it is true, that we do struggle um, with really... We do, we do have some difficulties in that area as well. So, I mean, if neurotypicals struggle with, like, knowing themselves, how is an autistic expected to do that? Do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> so that's another reason why it's so important to get, like, that expert, expert opinion, you know. And obviously it is only an opinion until we have an actual biological test for autism. It will remain an opinion, albeit hopefully a very, um, what's the word well-considered one, taking into account all of the evidence and everything. You know, it's always only ever going to be subject to, you know, human, um, what's the word? I mean, a clinician, you, your diagnosis is only really as good as a clinician, you know, and that's always going to be an issue until we have, say, a biological marker for autism. But it's the best we have right now, isn't it? And I think you can trust an expert diagnosis, you know, but a self-diagnosis, I can't trust that. If someone says to me that they think they're basically self-diagnosed autistic, I'll be like, okay. You know, it's, it's not going to really convince me. I mean, I might, I might, and another thing, put it this way, okay. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with someone saying that they think they might be autistic. That is not self-diagnosing. Saying you think you're autistic is the first step to going to get that assessment. Before I was diagnosed autistic, I was thinking I might be autistic. I, I thought it was very likely, but I also knew that it wasn't inevitable and that I needed to get, you know, because obviously I can't diagnose myself. First possibility, I was wrong. So I needed to get it verified, you know. Also, regardless of whether or not I needed support or not, and obviously getting needing support was the ultimate reason why I needed that diagnosis, but regardless of whether or not you need support or not, I wouldn't feel confident in myself to self-diagnose me. I would be full of doubts. I'd be like, well, what if I'm wrong? What does, what, you know, what authority do I have to, to say this about myself? You know, what if I'm wrong? How confident can I be in my own judgment? You know, um, that's why I can't self-diagnose myself, say, with dyspraxia. I'd feel dishonest. Even, even thinking about it makes me feel icky because I'd feel so dishonest and it would feel so wrong and, like, ethically immoral to do that. I can't do that. I just cannot do that. I need a... Before I can actually officially say I have it, and I might not, by the way, I might not have it, I, you know, I need... I would need to get it, you know, properly assessed, like I did with autism. So, yeah, it's immoral, I feel, and it trivialises. And, um, and most of the time, it's the most able. But once you um, self-diagnose before getting an autism assessment... I feel that's still dodgy, and, and they should really just say, I think I might have it, not using the word self-diagnosis. I don't understand what's wrong with them just simply saying, I think I might have it. It's all in the wording as well. But at least they then go on and get it verified or not. You know, obviously they might be wrong, might they? But at least they go, they then go on and get it verified. But for those who just say they think they might have... Sorry, for those who self-diagnose without any further need to get an assessment, they're the most able as well, so they're basically not disabled anyway. And I just feel it's really irresponsible and wrong, basically. So yeah, anyway, that's, that's my one over, so thank you for watching.